episode of Dana Being Dana is brought to you in part by Grow Wellness Group, a Naperville-based full-service provider of therapy, coaching, and mental wellness services. Hello, and welcome to Dana Being Dana. I'm Dana Michelle, and I'm thrilled you're with us. My show is all about different aspects of the human connection, things that bring us together and living life intentionally. We are living now in a time of great uncertainty, and we have all experienced incredible life changes in this pandemic. Jobs, loved ones, homes, death. Grief is real, and it lasts longer than many believe. Getting unstuck from where you are is hard. Starting a new chapter can be hard. Moving forward can sometimes feel impossible, but there is help. Intentional ways of changing your mindset, focus, or getting unstuck include self-care and mindset work through the form of therapy, coaching, or counseling. Joining me today are professionals and friends of mine in this space. I think it's important to note that to get engaged in this type of self-care and proactivity, it doesn't necessarily have to be a catalytic or catastrophic event um, that brings you to that. But what does it mean to be unstuck or blocked? It's a general feeling of dissatisfaction. Uh, you can't quite can't put your finger on it. It's more of a just your 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 life doesn't look like your desires. You are unable to call in the things that you really want. And a lot of the times people want to change, they just don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have tools and to intentionally seek them out. When we, when we talk about um, getting started, you know, taking some of those first steps, how influential is your past to address the challenges that keep you stuck? My past had a lot of uh, bullying and a lot of things that happened to me. And um, I just was one of these stubborn, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to show myself, show what I can do. And um, I think that always led me into what I'm doing now as an entrepreneur always led me into being my own person. And I was just not going to take any of that bullying and be inside. I wanted it to grow. So I wanted to show them that I can, um, I can do what I'm able to do. I like what you said about bullying because many people are impacted by traumas. Yes. And they don't even know it. No. Um, how, how do you overcome that? So I think the first step really is recognizing that you've been impacted by a trauma. I think a lot of times we associate traumas with these really like big catastrophic events, but that doesn't have to be the case at all. And things like something that children going through bullying or going through divorce or things like that can also be traumatic. And I really think that the first step is just being able to acknowledge and kind of recognize the fact that I have been impacted by this and I do need to do something about it because it's affecting me. Mm -hmm. Whether it's creating you know, bad energy or mistakes or problems, um, I think it's also important to forgive yourself. Um, is forgiveness and how is forgiveness involved in a healthy mindset? I think it's incredibly important. I don't think we understand how heavy the energy of unforgiveness is. Mm -hmm. I actually realized that I needed to do some work in that when I had a Reiki session where the mm -hmm. practitioner told me I had, I was holding on to some energy actually um, regarding my divorce mm -hmm. and that I needed to really forgive my ex-husband to move on. And it really did make a difference. And I have this practice that I use when I'm having a, a tough time with someone, I'll light a candle for them during my meditation for 30 days mm -hmm. and don't get into the issue. I'll just, you know, say their names and them light and love. And amazingly enough, within that 30 day space, either the person's behavior changes or you don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's super powerful. And you know, sometimes you have to revisit it. You know, it's a process with yeah. certain people, but you know, it's really powerful. And that's something that has been really helpful for me. Mm. And on the topic of forgiveness, I mean, forgiving others so we can be set free from that, but self-forgiveness oh. and practicing that. Yeah. And I think that's important to note the forgiveness of oneself, mm. you know, in addition to other people, that self-reflection uh, and personal accountability, how does that play into getting unstuck? I think it's everything because <laughs> you have to own your stuff before you can really heal. And I think what I teach is to it as an empowering thing. 
not as something that you need to run from because of the, like an ego thing. You know, right. so a lot of people don't want to own their stuff because especially as women, we have to pretend like we're perfect and social media and like all this stuff. And so people kind of never really dig deep because they don't like look at their stuff. But I think you cannot truly heal or transform until you address your stuff and figure out what it is you need to work on. And then from there, and then once you do that, and you see the change behavior and your life changing, it's super empowering and it's nothing to be afraid of from there. It's leaning into that pain sometimes too, channeling it yep. into that uh, positive energy that we can actually use it as fuel, as you mm -hmm. said, Sharon, being right. bullied, right. Um, taking that and actually using it to empower you and fuel your, your right. vision or your yeah, desire. It actually made me stronger. Yeah. So, and I always, I, I used to, I was a personal trainer before and I had a client that was bullied badly. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're going to be a stronger adult mm -hmm. because you were bullied, mm -hmm. because you're going to find yourself and you're going to be able to, you know, show them that, mm -hmm. you know, insecure people are the ones that are bullying. Yeah, right. That's not so secure true. people. The so most absolutely. important part of that is choice. Right. Making the choice mm -hmm. to channel that energy into something positive and productive rather than allowing it to weigh you down. Right. Yeah. Choosing that, I think it goes back to some of the stuff that we've talked about regarding that mindset, mm -hmm. you know, and, and making that choice. Uh, I think adversity can make you so much stronger mm -hmm. and owning it, you know, being accountable um, mm -hmm. and also forgiving yourself mm -hmm. is, is so important. It's important uh, to make sure that you're making healthy choices. Um, Christina, you had talked before about, you know, that what you put into your body shows up on the outside. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, you can look at it from every aspect. You know, if you have allergies, if you have inflammation, um, if you are sick, if you're depressed, um, you're dehydrated, your minerals are off, your nutrients are off, right? Because you're not taking care of yourself. So it all correlates, it all, uh, it all ties in. Those things are all so important, right? The old saying of we are what we eat, there's a lot of truth to that. But what about we are what we consume in, in terms of the content that we take in, social media, um, I've started to follow a lot more positive content, mental health related content, um, and that has made a world of difference in how I view myself. You know, again, com that coming out on the outside, the frustrations that can come out just due to taking a negative or pessimistic content. And I think that people like social media can, can kind of get a bad rep sometimes because it really is about you just being intentional. You can curate yeah. your feed. Like, Absolutely. I literally yeah. only see great memes and puppies, you know, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a traumatizing place for me because I set the intention with my morning routine and I'm focused about the types of things I consume. Right. So inside, outside, it's the same thing. Right. You're, you're talking a lot about the energy mm -hmm. and, and I think that's important to note because, and you've said this before, mm -hmm. you know, to focus on what you want, focus on the positivity, focus on the good, mm -hmm. focus on your goals. Mm -hmm. Uh, versus what can go wrong, the setbacks, mm -hmm. the anxieties, the concerns, because you really can spiral. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done that my own self before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to, to focus on the good stuff. How does energy play into all of this? Oh my goodness, we're 100% we're energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our whole body radiates it. And uh, we have a massage called the healer which actually is an energy balancing massage. Mm. And I had it done not too long ago. And she would, after the massage, she would place her hand on certain parts of my mm. body. And then she read me wow. and she read my energy and uh, she was spot on. I mean, she, she said things like I was bullied uh, before she knew that in me. And uh, so we are just one big energy ball in how we project. And, and I mean, my massage therapists, their hands are just amazing. And I mean, there are times when they've even put their hand on their head and it, it, it jolts them yeah. because we have too much going on in our brain and, um, and they feel that. So it, it's just amazing the, you know, to balance out your energy. We, we are energy and right. energy is power. What does it mean to understand your power? I think it's important to know that every thought we think, every word we say carries a vibration and we attract like energy 
based on those thoughts and words. So like you said earlier, it's so important to focus on what you desire, not focusing, not spending a lot of time in the things that are not working, not ignoring them. I think you should have a framework on how to unpack because it's, it's valuable information in the things that aren't working as well, but it should not be the focus. We, we deal with it, we move on, and we get focused on what we desire. Very powerful. It's very powerful. I wanna talk about doubt, especially when you are trying to get started. Um, in the in the midst of a big leap forward, you know you're you're almost there to your big breaking point. You're almost ready to try something new, to do something different. Uh, what advice do you have for people who are mired in doubt? I think the one thing I would say at the outset is don't try to kind of deny the doubt is there. I think we've all had times where we doubt ourselves and we try to push it to the side, and then it just keeps getting worse and worse. And I think just acknowledging that it's there. And then doing what you can to support yourself in the moment too, I think is important in terms of reaching out for help, mm -hmm. the self-care, but just kind of not beating yourself up for doubting yourself because I think that's something we all do from time to time. Right. I think that support, that positive reinforcement, um, surrounding yourself, your environment, curating, you know, not just social media, but also the people that you're connected to, mm -hmm. right? You can know someone for a very long time and they may not be positive for you. Um, they, that may not be a healthy connection. And, and I think maybe connecting with people, you know, and things that, that do support you, that do uplift you, right. um, I think is critical. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater. For us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. This episode of Dana Being Dana is brought to you in part by Grow Wellness Group, a Naperville-based full-service provider of therapy, coaching, and mental wellness services. Welcome back to Dana Being Dana, where we are talking about getting your mind right. So I want to ask, is there a difference in getting unstuck, moving forward, and finding your purpose, if it's professional or personal? Well, I think you have to probably start with the personal, and I think that can inform the professional. So, you know, when you get your mind clear about who you are, what you want, I think it would, it's actually most beneficial then to determine what the professional should be. And where I often start with my clients, Dana, is identifying our personal values. Mm -hmm. So once we know what really is important to us, what matters the most in our personal lives, then that can be reflected in our professional lives. Well, and it's also creating boundaries and, you know, again, surrounding yourself with the right content, the right people, and whether that be on social media or in your personal life, you know, it's really, um, it's really starting with yourself. Yeah. I absolutely think that's the most critical because if you are not giving yourself 100%, there's no way that you can bring that to a profession of any kind. Mm -hmm. Right. And understanding your passions. Passions mm -hmm. are very important, and if it's, it's you're portraying your passion, people are going to see that. They're going to see that you love what you're doing, mm -hmm. love what you, you know, want to help. I've always wanted to help people, and it, you know, and if you have that passion inside you and you portray it, they're going to believe you. They're going to say, "Oh, she really does want to help me." <laughs> right, and it's reflected you know? in your work yes. too, right. Right? right? Like you provide mm -hmm. better work, you put better quality work out because you're taking care of yourself. You feel good. You're confident in what you are doing as a person. And that reflects yes. in your profession. Your energy. Yeah. And that's why that self-care is so important. Um, can you talk a little bit more about self-care, particularly when you're trying to grow 
and trying to do something that could be different yes. or uncomfortable. Well, Dana, what I have been seeing with the women that I've met, they don't give themselves enough me time. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're in a job, we're working all day long, we're taking care of the kids, we're cooking, we're doing everything, and they feel guilty that they're taking an hour for themselves. And when I see them come to the you know, boutique, I'm like, you know, this is just for you. Time to relax, time to let go of all the stress. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for them to do that sometimes. And um, we, have to, we have to give ourselves a break and say we, we need to study and work on ourselves and, and relax and take a break. And um, that's very important, you know, to give that self me time. You know, if, even if it's exercising, I mean, I'm a, I was a personal trainer. Um, I enjoy exercising and, and exercising to me takes away all the stresses. Stress. It helps with stress and, and, and keeps a balance in your life. And um, got to get into that me time. <laughs> I think and there's this common misconception that self-care is selfish when no, it's really the it's most not, selfless right? thing that we can do right. in order to show up for others in our lives to show up for ourselves. Right. right. It's boundaries. That's more, it's not just like going to the spa. I think even creating a boundary of I'm going to go to the spa. It's not just about, you know, the physical. It's about creating space for you and setting boundaries and saying no and putting yourself first sometimes so that you can pour from a full cup, you know, so to right. speak. Spending time with yourself, really cultivating that most important relationship, with, which is with ourselves. I think all of this is so important and, you know, it's been great reminders, you know, for me in my own life and in terms of self-care, prioritizing yourself, taking your time, um, being present, being in the space. Um, how have you used these tools in your own life or on your own journey? Uh, for me, I mean, it's been incredible personally, um, really getting out of depression, getting out of that stuck mindset. Um, you know, at the end of the day, no one can do it for you. You have to show up for yourself. Well, and I just want to say, too, I've always, I guess, as a male, had not an aversion, but always a little afraid of the spa and stuff. But <laughs> I have started doing that recently. And I know I'm in a room full of wonderful women here. That's okay, but to, to any males, don't be afraid to do that, to go out and treat yourself and just do nice things for yourself because it really does make a big difference. Yeah, and it's, it's important, not just for women, um, for men too, you know, whether you're a parent or um, whether you're just a professional, self-care is important. It's vital to your success um, right. and it's vital to your mental health, you know, making sure that you take time to exercise and put the right nutrients in your body or, you know, get a massage, get a facial, right. um, whatever it is that really gives you that time uh, and to really sit with yourself and your thoughts. You're really talking about quality of life here, right? I mean, taking care of ourselves so that we can not just live longer, but live happier, healthier, more productive lives. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think taking care of the personal is, is so important. Um, but I also think when you do take care of the personal, as we've discussed, it can benefit you in the start, you know, of your project, of your passion, of your business. Mm -hmm. Several of you are entrepreneurs um, or entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. How has that directly impacted that aspect of your lives? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I have to say that I'm a better employer than I am an employee. <laughs> so, I would say that I, that has always been my passion, again, to help people. So I wanted to create uh, an environment where everybody feels that they're, they're valid mm -hmm. and they're important to our boutique. And um, so, I mean, I feel that um, being an entrepreneur is something that um, is a challenge. But yet, I, um, it fits my personality, it fits my passion that I, I want to help others. And um, so I, I've always been an entrepreneur. And having that entrepreneurial spirit, I think the most important thing is to practice gratitude uh, because we can get mm -hmm. caught up in saying, well, if I just hit this next step, if I just accomplish this next goal, life will look this certain way. But if we can really be present, ground ourselves and be mindful and be grateful for what we do have in this moment, then more will come to us. And it is that energy, right? It's going to draw you towards what, what you desire. Right. Yeah. Very true. Because I think that one of the mistakes people make with 
manifestation or calling thing is in is waiting until the thing happens. You, we have to embody mm. the thing. And then again, from an energy perspective, we call it in. So yeah. it's about being joyful. If you think the money or the relationship is going to make you happy, just be happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you're more, much more likely to draw it in. Some people who are watching, and I hope this episode is very helpful, you know, are hearing all this and it sounds great, you know, but they, they're stuck. Mm. They're stuck after a divorce. They're stuck after a job displacement. They're stuck being overwhelmed or depressed or not taking enough time for themselves. Um, and so in many ways, we can block our own blessings mm. and be in our own way. What is the first step that you recommend um, in terms of getting out of your own way? Well, I think, again, and I've already said something kind of along these lines, but I think, again, it's recognition and it's realizing that you are in your own way in the first place. Just one example I can think of is maybe someone who's had bad experiences in relationships and now they're kind of closed off. They don't want to open up as much. They struggle to reach out to people, but they're feeling lonely. Yeah. And I think then it's kind of a case of that something bad happened to you that was really hurtful, but now it's kind of caused you to feel stuck. I think a lot of it, too, is um, just taking baby steps. You know, people often have this misconception that um, you have to be super successful. The first time you try it, it all has to go well. And it's acknowledging that any progress is progress. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter if you slip up, you're human. That's natural. Mm-hmm. It's really just saying, like, OK, this happened. It's OK. And I'm going to celebrate my success no matter how small. Yeah. Right. Learning to recalibrate, you know, and get back to after a setback um, or recognizing, you know, that that you're holding yourself back, uh, recalibrating, getting back to that, you know, so so that you're able to jump in, you know, and you're you're motivated and positive about a new relationship after a bad breakup or you're motivated to get that job after being, you know, let go from from a job. Um, Any final advice? Any, anything you want to share about um, how important it is um, to, to take care of yourself, to work on your mindset, um, and to go out there and chase you know, your dreams, your goals? Dana, I just want to say for final thoughts as that first step that Will talked about is acknowledging what's taking place within us. And then Christina said, you know, taking baby steps. And I think one of those really important first steps could be to find support, Um, whatever that looks like, you know, a a friend, a family member, or potentially a counselor or a professional who you can turn to for not only that support, but accountability. And those really important reminders that people are posting highlight reels of their lives. Mm -hmm. And we are all just humans with the same struggles and the same types of pain. You want to lean into that pain and channel it towards positive energy, towards good. One of the things that helped me a lot in my healing was understanding my humanness, Mm -hmm. understanding as a human with a brain that you're not supposed to be able to change a habit overnight. It's literally physically impossible. So I I stopped judging myself, Mm -hmm. you know, when I was having a hard time changing and understanding that was really freeing for me. I think everyone should invest in themselves and create whatever arsenal of tools they need, whether it be therapy, spiritual support, um, self-care with the massages and things like that, and and be very okay with it being whatever works for you. It doesn't have to look like what everybody else is doing, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And um, investing in yourself, really investing in yourself. We spend so much time, money, energy on other people, especially as moms, we have to invest in ourselves. So Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend uh, looking into tools that support your healing. I think my final thought would be just kind of in the vein of what Molly said. And when you're reaching out for help, really congratulate yourself for that and recognize that that in itself is a big step. Because a lot of the times reaching out for help can be really hard. And so I think even if you're in the process of going to counseling, going to physical therapy, whatever it is to address whatever issues you're facing, give yourself a pat on the back because that in itself is a tough thing to do. I think for me, um, you know, it's it's all of those things, but it's really taking a look at what you're intaking in your body. Um, it is the mental health, but it's also really important to take a look at the nutrients you're putting into your body. You know, are you eating right? Are you taking the right supplements? Um, when you're deficient in 
certain vitamins and uh, minerals, you will feel it. You'll feel it in your body. You'll feel it mentally. Um, you'll feel sluggish. You're fatigued. You can't think straight. You have a uh, mm -hmm. foggy brain. Um, you could even start to see some effects on your skin, your hair. You know, you'll, your hair will fall out from stress. Your skin's breaking out or you're having um, all sorts of problems that you didn't have before. Right. So it really is taking a look at your mental health, but also what are you putting into your body? You know, are you, are you eating processed foods? Are you filling your body with um, junk food, essentially, you know, or, or are you eating a well-balanced diet? Right. Um, you know, right. it all it all correlates. Yeah, totally, Absolutely. totally agree with you, Christina. And, and then a little uh, component of that, have time for relaxation. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't do enough of that, you know, have time to turn it off turn completely social media off, television off, everything off, and relax. You know, uh, getting eight hours, nine hours of sleep, that's extremely important, important for our, our health, for our mental health, and for our whole physical body. And um, I, I mean, I'm all about eating right and supplements and everything like that, but we forget about we need to have some uh, downtime to relax, to turn it off. That's yeah. the hardest thing, I think, for most people is to turn it off. And uh, just, we have the sound of the waves in our massage and uh, we just absolutely turns your brain off. We are inherently valuable. So taking that time and releasing ourselves of that guilt or that shame for actually taking care of ourselves is most important. Relax, reset and recharge. And yeah. uh, we all need to do that. <laughs> and that recharge is so important. And I yeah. appreciate that, that very important reminder. Change or new beginnings are both courageous and scary, but with great risk is the opportunity for great reward. If you find yourself in a valley, remember that the best view comes after the hardest climb. Believe in yourself and surround yourself with people who do too. Courage is rewarded. Thank you to my guests for the work that you do in this space. Special thanks to Grow Wellness Group for bringing awareness to this very important topic. Hopefully you have been entertained, if not encouraged or inspired. I do not promise to be an expert, nor do I have all the answers. I'm just Dana being Dana. <laughs> See you next time. This episode of Dana Being Dana is brought to you in part by Grow Wellness Group, a Naperville-based full-service provider of therapy, coaching, and mental wellness services.